are you? You see in the title it says, why did you open your business? Why did you start your business? I'm asking this question because at different stages of your business, there will be different things that drive you. And if you're not in a space of awareness with what's driving you in what season, it can eventually lead to complacency. Um, it can lead to you not really actualizing what you really opened your business for. Now, for most people, at the core center of why they open their business is freedom. Now, there are different levels of freedom. But when you are unaware, when you are not fully tapped in to the fact that your business is the vehicle that's bringing you the added opportunities and experiences that you desire for your family, the up-leveling of your lifestyle, the up-leveling of your quality of life, it is the thing that gives you more freedom um, even with your time mm -hmm. until you step into the full awareness that this business that you are creating is the vehicle for that, you can easily fall into complacency. Now, when I say what's driving you, when I think back to my entrepreneurial journey, when I very first started out, so most people start their business from a craft or something they're good at, some something intellectually that they can deliver to someone else, um, a skill that they can serve someone with. It's those of you who are in a service-based business, which are my people? So those of you who own a brick and mortar business or um, you offer a service such as coaching, teaching, training, your therapist, chiropractor, realtor, all those things. What most people in the very beginning stages, well, let me start with me. So when I first started in my entrepreneurial journey, it was a skill set that I provided a service for other people. And I absolutely loved it, but initially it was to pay bills. Do you guys hear me? Initially, I needed a job, I needed money, right? And this was something I was passionate about. So I actually went to college, um, I did not finish, and I began doing this skill set that I've been doing for quite some time. I've been doing it in high school without really realizing that that was a thing, right? I didn't understand that that was actually something that you could earn a, an amazing living off of. I actually earned six figures with that particular skill set in my early 20s. So in the beginning, that was my job. And for most people in the beginning, the C stage, the genesis of the business, you just need something you can play with now. You need a client, you need customers, you need money. But if you're not careful, you'll be doing the same thing 5, 10, 15 years, and that is still the reason that you're running your business. I hear things like, I just want to help people. I'm here this morning because I want to talk about the mindset and the activity behind your business is very much a part of how your business is or is not growing. The rate at which it's growing, um, the amount, um, like 2x, 3x, whatever, the amount at which it's growing behind that is the mindset. And so I'm asking you what's driving you at this particular stage of your business because if what's driving you is still to pay bills and have a few niceties so maybe you'll take a trip here or there maybe you'll go to a conference you buy maybe a bag or two if that is the reason that you are in business and you're 5 10 15 years in it is very much going to dictate how you earn money so what happens for most people who go into entrepreneurship, who go into owning a business, they're really self-employed because they create a bigger job for themselves. So remember I said in the first stage, it was a job for me, right? This was what was gonna pay the bills. I mean, I also happen to love it, but you can love something and not be in a space of aware awareness, grow tired 
of the way that you're doing the thing and throw many, many years. Well, I don't want to say throw it down the drain, but just call it quits on something that you've been doing for a long time that has so much um, invested, that you've invested so much in if you don't remain in a state of awareness. So again, I ask you, why did you open your business and what is driving you at this particular point? Sometimes I hear people say, I just want to help people. And this is my thoughts. So when you own a business, you take all of the risk, right? You, you get the building or you make this the thing that you do that's creating money for you and your family and all the things. It's so much marketing hiring there are so many things attached to owning a growing business right that it would sometimes if you're only if if you are telling yourself i just want to help people you can get a regular job where you have a definite income coming in a, a paycheck and nothing is completely definite but where you have a paycheck coming in and help people so even the language that you use when you talk about the business that you have makes a significant difference in the amount of money that you earn in your business. One thing that I think we must understand is that a business is open to make money. And so many people shy away from saying, I want to make more money. See, if it's your innate quality to be a giver, you're going to do that at any level. And I know it sounds good. I know it's the thing that's been going on around the internet to say, I just want to help people. But most people have a desire to help people. But if that is your focus, you can help people from any level. So in my first stages of owning a business, it was a job for me, right? And then at a new level, my focus became a new measure of freedom, tapping into a new measure of freedom. What this required me to do was, number one, to become really, really good at the skill that I did, right? So that having clients wasn't this thing that I was searching for, but more so something I was attracting. There were disciplines that I had to acquire. There was a level of structure and organization. Um, for me, it was actually owning a business where I could duplicate the services that I was doing, hire people to do those services, and have a well-oiled machine that didn't always require my time. And you have to be in a space of awareness. Also, at this time, you know, shortly after, in a three-year time span, I got married and then I had a baby. And there was a space in time where when I first had my daughter, I didn't even know if I wanted to go back to work. I didn't, I was like, I, I wanna be home. It felt natural, felt very natural. Now this is, you know, where, I mean, some people could call it manifestation, but I actually, right after my daughter was born, for about a year, I only went to work for about two days um, for two to three hours and most of it was managing and I might service a client in between but my business was still running because I had staff because I had put things in place I didn't know that my daughter would have a respiratory mm -hmm. um, infection she caught from daycare and the scare of it it didn't take her a year to heal but as just as a mom I felt I needed to be home with my daughter I needed some her to get some age on her where she can kind of start gesturing and talking about um, what was going on with her. My daughter could say 27 words at, at 18 months. And so that was at the point where I believe, um, and she wasn't in daycare. So what my ex-husband and I did at that time was I would stay home all day. And then in the evenings that I work, you know, he would watch my daughter while, while I went to work. And so um, she wasn't even in daycare, but my business gave me that freedom. You guys hear what I'm saying? Because for some of you, you may say, well, I own my own business, 
so that I can take care of my children financially. But what about emotionally and, and all those other things? My mentor shared with me, and this, is, this thing here really hit home for me, and I believe that it was embedded in my subconscious programming that kind of caused me to create and build the way that I have. Other than having great mentors and coaches who had a model that I could at least look at to see how certain parts of their model fit my destiny path. Right, And you got to have awareness to even begin creating your destiny path. But one of the things my mentor shared with me was that she had seen a lot of people in the beauty and wellness industry who actually lost their family to their job. Now, you heard me say job because of the amount of hours that they were working, because of how much time they had to invest into it. Um, some marriages failed. Um, some children were like kind of left to do things on their own and in my mind i said i gotta figure a way that this does not impact me this way where i am able to um goodness i forgot to turn i don't know how to turn this off okay um where how can i build this so that i can still be at every one of my daughter's activities um, and still make money. I had to look at my business model. And I'm sharing this because, remember in the first phase, no kids, no children, you know, just me. It was a job for me. It was the way I paid my bills. And it was good money. I traveled. I bought the name brand. I did all the things. But over time, things change. You change. You evolve. And my question to you is, is your business and brand evolving with you? Because I see so many times where people are have been doing something 10, 15, listen guys, 30 plus years. 30 plus years. And they have not established their business in a way where if they are not there, there is money being made. Your business, look, continue to look at your life and figure out what do I need to adjust? What should I be working on in this season? Um, another thing that really shifted for me as I moved into like the second stage of my business was how I invested. I invested heavily, not in how to work more, but how to create systems, structure, um, how to get better at what it was that I was doing so that the value of what I was doing in the marketplace increased so that I could earn more or less my effort. So my level of investment changed as I evolved, as my focus in my life changed. I needed my business to do different things for me. As long as you look at your business as a job for yourself that you go and you trade time for dollars with, you will always choose lesser options until you see that you deserve greater that your business has the potential and the flexibility to grow and move and evolve with you, you will under earn in your business. You will under earn and you will overwork in your business until you've tapped into understanding that you can create different avenues and realms in your business to support how you are evolving as a person. This is why when I'm working with clients, number one, vision. Where do you want to, five, 10 years, where do you want to take this? Because I see so many people, 5, 10, 15, 20 plus years, even 30, still doing the same thing. Now, they may have bought new equipment. They may have even bought a different level of car or, or thing like that. But the thing that they do every single day, for the most part, has not changed. And it comes from not having vision. The people that I've worked with, in fact, they are on track to their goals. I spoke with a client who um, I worked with about three years ago who actually worked a corporate job and has a, a six-figure business as well that she created and started that business in 2020, 2021. It's at six figures already, and she also works a corporate job, but her goal was to be finished to leave her job within five years. Next year, she will be leaving her job. 
her business has already earned six figures. And so, and then there are others who, you know, maybe reached out to me five years ago and th still they may have moved to a new place or started five to 10 different things, but position wise in their life, they're still in the same space. And there are just some principles and some things that you do at each level of your business that sets you up for next. But if you don't have a target, if you don't have a, a goal, you will continue to create more stuff. You'll add more stuff to your service menu. You'll go get another degree. You'll go get another certification to learn to do another thing and all the things. But the position that you're in and how it's impacting your life and your freedom will ultimately be the same. So in that second phase, people, you need to get more defined, right? Like for those of you who are coaches, I can't tell you the power of your contract. I, I have a personal experience where I said, I am so grateful that I have a contract. I'm so grateful that I've taken the time and invested in having that in my business. So systems, organization, structure, you, if you continue to create more stuff, you're piling it on an unstable foundation that will not be able to support you no matter how much money you're bringing in. I hope this is making sense. And so I'm just here this morning asking you to ask yourself, why did I open my business? And what's driving me at this point in my business? What is it that I desire? What moves do I need to make in this season that are in alignment with where I desire to go and not where I am right now? Most people set goals. Most people invest for the level that they're on, not the level that they desire to go, which is always higher than, than where you are. But it's what you do now that sets you up for the future. So in that first stage, um, I remember I did sort of kind of have a type of client that I wanted to serve, but I think my advantage was because I actually worked for a company first. And I began, the, the type of clients that they had there were just naturally the type of clients that I attracted as I moved forward. And they were consistent working people, all those things. But because I wasn't aware when I stepped out on my own, there was a season where I was just handing out my, my business card. And I had to kind of go back to some foundational things that I learned early in my career. I believe in mentorship, guys. Listen, and you know, there's this thing where people feel, you know, that mentorship is this free thing. The world has changed and the likelihood of you being able to get a mentor where there isn't some type of compensation that you have to give is very rare. You you shouldn't even want to. If you understood manifestation, if you understood the laws of abundance, you understand that you need something to sow into e either way. But even with my mentor, it won't free. It wasn't free. There were, I did things for her that people would normally be compensated for that I wasn't compensated for money-wise but I was compensated for it, oh my goodness, in, in other ways, right? And then there have been coaches in my life, of course, you know, that, that I've paid, but you, if you can't get around investing to get things that you don't know from people who have done things that you desire to do, from people who have the measure of freedom that you desire to have. And the longer you put those things off, the longer it takes you. It's just like law. It's part of this process of building and growing in your life and your business. So in that first phase, most of the time you're just, you just need clients. In the second stage, you begin to get more particular about who you serve. I remember when I first launched my mastermind, this was back in 2018, I had an idea of the type of clients that I wanted to serve, but I was able to become even more particular about the people that I wanted to serve. Number one, I wanted people who were willing to take responsibility for themselves. 
because there are certain people at certain stages they they're just in denial that they play any part in what is not transpiring in their business and in their life I, you know i think i talked about this recently if you're in the stage of being a victim then you will never be able to see what is it that i need to do differently and so i i like ambitious people i like people who can do the work it's one of the reasons i love my vip days because it gives people who are extremely busy who are self-driven who can take the information and go and get results an opportunity in one day in a short shorter amount of time to get results faster right and so I work with people who are ready they are committed they are coachable they're teachable and they are actually really ready for their next level right and so in that second phase you you can kind of change who your clients are if you have clients that you feel if you go up on your prices they're going to leave those may not be your clients for this season and most people worry that there's going to be a loss in income and finances sometimes that is the case but there are systems that you can put in place where you are always bringing new clients into your business there's there you have leads or however you want to call it but you have a way where you are attracting new clients that you can speak to talk to and attract in your business while other people may be phasing out simply because you have evolved and then there are people in your business who are waiting for you to up level they're waiting for you to up level so what you're talking about and your pricing look completely different so you may be saying this you know luxury thing but your pricing speaks may speak basic and so you lose the people who would actually um, be an aligned fit for that higher level thing that you're doing and this is where I talk about um, your perfect people. I still have one spot available for those of you who really want to identify who your perfect people are so you can get an alignment with your next higher, more premium clients who pay you, who refer you, who have services with you again, um, and who easily um, afford or make a way to be able to have services with you. So that second phase, um, your your systems, your structure, your organization. Listen, making putting more money on top of what's unorganized, what doesn't have order, what doesn't have structure, it, it's a disaster waiting to happen because foundationally what you have can't hold all the new things you're wanting to call in. So in that second phase, that's something to really be focusing on. You can't like skip over it. And in the third phase, in that second phase, you're also, well, for me, I was looking for a new level of work-life harmony. So I share with you, I went to every single awards day, classroom party, field trip. I didn't miss a beat with my daughter, but it was structures that I created in my business that allowed my business to continue flowing and running while I was doing those things. Now, I personally, being a service provider, wasn't making money if I wasn't there, but my business was making money. And that's a mindset shift that you have to make. For those of you, you know, you're making six figures and you're wanting to move to that multiple six figures or you're right on the cusp of six figures. And I say anywhere from 20 to, to, to 15K is the cusp right um less than um six figures is a cusp of six figures you have to have new systems and structures that are doing some of the heavy lifting for you that is the time and the space for that um what's driving you during this time is it more things you want to be able to provide for your family not things like material things necessarily but more experiences different quality of things more freedom in how you get to to spend your money um, that third stage for me, which is the stage I'm in now, is alignment. It is alignment. Right? And alignment is doing what I love, um, doing things that I'm overqualified for. So people who see me, they understand my value and easily pay, pay, pay me for my services and get magical results in their life and in their business. Does that make sense? 
I give my best behind the scenes. Now, granted, there are people who can take bits and pieces of what I'm doing online and they can build. But my most valuable work goes to my perfect people that invest, that pay me. And those are the thoughts that you should have as well. You're running a business. And this becomes really, the line really becomes blurred for those who are believers because there's this uncertainty about whether or not you should be charging. So your mindset is, is huge as it relates to your business and, you know, stepping into a space of awareness to find out what's driving me in this season. What do I actually need my business to do based on um, where I'm at in my life? Makes a huge difference. It's one of the reasons some people get to a certain point and just, they just work, just work, just work. And then they wake up one day and they're like, I'm exhausted from this, the way that I'm doing this. And if they're not careful, all the years will just go down the drain. When those years, there is expertise and experience that if positioned properly, if their structure and foundation is there, can make them money without them always trading their time. Will earn them more money, less their effort. And so for each stage, your mindset about your money has to change, how you earn it, how you invest it, how you spend it, how you keep it. Your, each level, your mindset has to change. It will change what you do in your business. It will change who you attract in your business. So my question to you today is, why did you open your business? I have three ways at the top of my head to support you. One, my VIP day. For those of you, you're at that six-figure mark and you're, you need more stru structure, systems, a bigger strategy for your next you could be on the cusp of that six figure mark my vip but you're busy right you got some pots on the stove and you don't have time for an elongated program my vip day is an amazing opportunity it is five thousand five hundred and fifty five dollars i normally don't put prices on my videos like that because you know my prices change but i wanted it to speak to the people who are ready right who understand oh I need to pay that so I can move on to multiple six figures or whatever that thing is that I need to do my VIP day is available there is an installment option for that of course you before we have the day because we do it all in one setting outside of a 75 minute business assessment call that we do virtually online prior to us meeting in person or prior to the VIP day that we actually do online virtually so there are two ways to do it in person i absolutely love those um but also virtually um, and then there is my perfect people framework i have one more opportunity this month left for someone who i i need to understand who my perfect people are in this season i believe that they have changed but i'm not sure that i'm attracting them at the rate and at the level that I desire to, and I'd love to be more defined so that my messaging, how I'm positioning myself and what I'm doing in my business is a match for them. I have one more opportunity for that. And then there's my 3D Success Academy, which is the ultimate growth track. There's structure and systems and foundations. It's a year long opportunity um, to have my mentorship and coaching. I coach with you live once a month. It's a hybrid program where you get a monthly training on different topics, branding, um, vision, uh, marketing. Um, there's one on website building, leadership, uh, prosperity portal, which is real, real good. And each week under those different headings, you get a training that is self-paced. So you do it on your own time. And then at the end of the month, I do a live coaching session where you can ask questions if you had questions about the information that you got. So th those are three ways that you can work with me. Sit down, take a moment, ask yourself, what's driving me at this point in my business? Why did I open my business? And am I living that? Am I living the reason that I opened my business? Do I understand that my business is the vehicle that allows me to do those other things in my life? And so investing is a part of me. That's like upkeep on your car, the oil change, tune-ups. Maybe it's time for a tune-up for you and not just the oil change. 
from Joe around the corner, right? Maybe it's time for a tune-up. Maybe it's time for you to truly invest in getting the right information that you need for, for your business. I'd love to support you. Those are three ways. VIP Day, 3D Success Academy, and I have one more space available for the Perfect People Framework uh, session. I'll leave those links in the comments. Take some time um, to think for a few minutes. You can do that now and say, where am I in my business? What's driving me in my business? Pause for a moment. And when you figure that out, connect with me. So I can support you in what your next level needs to be for the business that you desire to run. Not one that runs your lifestyle, but one that funds your lifestyle. That's my take on this morning. Peace and abundance to you all.